Welcome once again to another edition of The Catholic View for Women, season number nine, episode two. We're continuing our discussion on Beyond Sunday, becoming a 24-7 Catholic. And if you missed our first episode, of course, we'll post it online for you to go back and look at later. But we're really helping you, which we do every day here at EW10 Radio TV Online, but giving you some real practical ideas on how to become a 24-7 Catholic based on my latest book, of the same name, Beyond Sunday, Becoming a 24-7 Catholic. In the first episode, we looked at some clips from my Archbishop, Alan Vigneron, in the Archdiocese of Detroit, where he's working with Catholics to do the same thing through his pastoral letter, Unleash the Gospel. Of course, to continue the conversation on the Catholic View are my wonderful co-hosts, Elena Rodriguez and Janet Marana from Priest Her Life. And Elena has a, a new title now, Busy on the Road. We're bound to bump into each other, the three of us, That's at the right. airport Keep at some time, lookout. right? Yes. right? So yes. explain yes. what you're doing right now for so the network. I am the new marketing manager for EWTN for the Northwest, for wow. the U.S. Northwest. Wow. And so it encompasses 11 states and it is a huge territory. I'm responsible for managing all marketing needs of EWTN and also for reaching out with the EWTN radio affiliates, uh, which is radio is a love of my heart, right. and also working with uh, our, our diocesan and diocesan communications directors and uh, also working with media missionaries and Great. area coordinators, which are the people who take a leadership role among the media missionaries. So, so you're going to be running into a lot of Catholic View for Women viewers on yes, the road. Yes, I, I do. On the road. I, yeah. do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I also attend a lot of conferences, Catholic conferences, family conferences, diocesan conferences that happen in the territory of the Northwest. And many times when I'm there at my table with all the EW, EWTN products, I come across people and, and ladies who come up and say, I, I have seen you, I have seen you, and they talk about the Catholic view, and it's a great moment to share, and you realize it's a shot in the arm for me right. and for them as well, because you share the faith and you are able to experience this instant friendship, even though you've never seen the person before. And after that, you exchange contact information, you stay in touch, and you pray for one another's needs. And it's just a wonderful opportunity. And that actually is a great uh, segue into what we're talking about on this second episode of our ninth season, Becoming a 24-7 Catholic, because what you do is help people embrace that as well. And Janet and I grew up, uh, Janet is um, in her 60s, I'm in my late 50s, and you're in, in your 40s. So we're at different you know, stages, but I think what Janet and I were growing up, Maybe not so much for you because I think it was the faith was a lot stronger in Latin America where you grew up. Mm -hmm. But for us, many of us fell away from the faith and really didn't know what it meant to be a 24-7 Catholic. And then we had a profound, profound reversion experiences, right. which you can read in our books and you can find them online <laughs> uh, and on our website at thecatholicview.com. <coughs> but then we finally got it. Oh my gosh, this is what it means to have this personal relationship with Christ. Our whole world view was altered by that, as we mentioned in the first episode, that surrender, that encountering Christ. Well, I think very often, you know, Teresa, when I think of my Catholic education growing up in Brooklyn, uh, you know, it was, first of all, Mass was back then in Latin, mm -hmm. and we didn't talk, we weren't taught much about having a relationship with Jesus. It was a lot of memorization of your catechism and prayers and all that. And so then when the culture hit, bam, in the 60s. And that's the key, I think. You know, yeah. it was very easy to be pulled away you know, because we did never establish that relationship with Jesus, you know. But it, even that prior to, let's say, when the, when the culture started to explode with, with the mass media, the vast right. changes, think about when we were growing up, even you, I know you're younger than us, but think about TV programming oh, forget back it. in the 60s it and 70s well, first compared of all, yeah, to what we have now. Go back yeah. to even my, the sitcoms. my era, my era, okay. Uh, I remember the shows like uh, I Love Lucy and uh, uh, Donna Reed and those shows. And then for my Married age, couples, it was, it was the, the Partridge family, right. Bewitched, I Dream of Jeannie, things about like Teresa. that. Married couples, they didn't even show them having one twin bed. Beds. Yes, twin, beds. twin beds. Twin beds. Twin beds back then. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and everything was just so prim and proper, which was beautiful in a way. And then, boom, we have the whole cultural revolution that hit. Now, you know, sex was, uh, have sex with whoever you're with, you know, no big deal. Contraception came in, abortion right behind it. And, like, basically, the dissension, I think, that happened uh, to Omana Vitae was huge. And I think that's really when pe women started embracing this, you know, okay, I can take the birth control pill and I can control my body and, and all that. It just, so many of us, I know I- You're talking about Humanivity of Human Life by Pope Paul, Pope Paul VI, VI, if we have right. some folks who aren't familiar with that. The yeah. document is on the website at 
EWTN. And I think the culture still is pulling so many people away, you know, because they go to Mass on Sunday, but then that's it, you know, and there's plenty of Catholics that don't even go over Sunday. And so, you know, this, this show is really challenging people, like, how do I embrace a deeper faith and, and take it beyond? Well, even if you are, if you're strong in your faith, there's those of us who, we, and it's not something we could say, oh, we're faithful, so we don't have to worry about it, that we got oh, this. Well, no. we're all on a journey, and if we're That's here, right. God's not through with us yet. So I want to play this clip, which is part of actually the study series videos that go with Beyond Sunday, Becoming a 24-7 Catholic. This is of my friend at EWTN's Ave Maria Radio, Crest in the Afternoon, talking about how he, as an author, speaker, apologist, Catholic talk show host, still needs to go Beyond Sunday. Sunday. He's got some great advice. Let's watch. But I think there are two reasons people stay parked. It's comfort zone. The first reason is that we're all, we all like to be comfortable. We all look for a certain equilibrium in our lives where there's not too much uh, discomfort and we're getting along. We're generally happy campers. And um, even this happens to even people who are on fire. Uh, they may be on fire, but they can even cool down a little bit and the embers are still warm but uh, even they need to be stoked and get up to speed again. That's the first thing, just basic comfort zone. But there's a second thing, it's sin. Mm. Some people get comfortable in their sin. Uh, Book of Hebrews talks about a besetting sin. And uh, that's a sin that is so frequent that it begins to shape our personality. And when we fight against it, it actually feels unnatural to fight against it. So two things, just the basic human wanting to be comfortable stay in a comfort zone. And the second thing is our comfort zone can adapt to sin and we stay locked into a certain kind of enslavement and we learn to love that bondage. You've got to open yourself up to new influences. Those influences can be encountered on retreat. They can be uh, found in books like Beyond Sunday. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, there's a lot of great Christian literature available. They can be discovered in liturgy. Um, but you've got to open yourself up to, and you've got to take the Lord at his word. If he says he's there, talk to him like he's there. Live in expectation that he is answering prayer. Uh, be, you know, we all have a story that God is telling through our lives. Our lives are not chaotic. Uh, at times it looks that way, but God is there. He's been there from our conception, and he'll be with us uh, into eternity. So open yourself up to live in expectation that God is telling a story through you. But do something to break the routine. Go on retreat. Enter a new Bible study. Uh, begin doing some reading. Uh, maybe you're not accustomed to praying on a regular basis. Do it every day, even if it's only two minutes a day. But do it every day. Uh, don't try to do too much. But those are the things that I know in my life it helps. I just, I just came back from a week-long retreat, which I hadn't done for about two years. And it was one of the best things I've done in the last uh, 15 years. So everybody has to push yourself outside your comfort zone and f ask God to meet you there because he's promised to be there. I also try to remember that we never get beyond the basics. So Sally and I will be celebrating in our 41st anniversary. Congratulations. Yeah. And I'm still learning to love. It, it hasn't been especially hard. I'm not trying to say that about my wife. But the point is, what does it mean to love like Jesus loved? A love that is generous and yet sacrificial. Loving to where it hurts. Because we believe that love is stronger than death. Mm -hmm. Do you love your spouse in a way where love is stronger than death? And I think we should be challenging ourselves. This is not the life of the saints in heaven. It's meant to be the life of the saints on earth. And so that's why I would just urge people, no matter where you are in your spiritual walk, you can go faster, you can go farther. And I would just you know, urge people to open themselves up to God, take him at his word. He's given us manifold precious promises that he's there for us to grow into. We've got eternity to do this, but let's do it now because I want to taste eternity now. I want to taste the powers of the age to come now. I don't want to wait till death. I want to know him now in the power of his resurrection. I love Al's honesty in that clip because Al Cresta, people think of him, they see him speak, he's written many books, he's a, a revert, he's an apologist on the area of day and people can say, oh, he's, he's got it, he's got it all together, but he admits very strongly that he has to work on it and we all have to work at 
not only becoming 24-7 Catholics, but remaining 24-7 Catholics. Well, I think one of the important uh, facts Al brought out was a retreat. You know, and very often in your parish bulletin, you know, throughout the year, most parishes do have some sort of retreat program that they'll offer for a men's retreat or a women's retreat, couples <clears> retreats. <throat> and I think the question to say to us ourselves is, well, have you ever considered going on a retreat? I know I've loved those opportunities when I've been on retreat. Uh, it really is a time to unplug, <laughs> turn off your cell phone, get rid of the devices, open the scriptures. Mm -hmm. and, and, and of course, all retreats usually have powerful mm -hmm. speakers there to help you reflect. Uh, I think that's one, if I had to suggest one thing from what Al said, I think everyone should pray about, can you go sometime this year on a retreat? You, you know, just a couple of days. It only has to be a weekend sometimes. And, right. uh, you owe it to yourself. Exactly. It, and it'll be good for you, even even healthy, very healthy, even physically for you. What? As you said, you get to unplug, you get to detox right. from the toxicity of the culture. But you also get a chance to stop everything and see where am I, where do I need to be, and deepen your roots of faith. And here at EWTN, we are very blessed as EWTN employees to have two retreat opportunities a year. We have wow. at least one in, in the Advent and one in, in Lent. Lent. And the That's network great. provides for us for transportation to go up to the, the shrine of the, most, Hansville. Uh, Hansville, Hansville. Yeah. Of the yeah. most blessed sacrament and have our retreat day there. And we get to take off work and we split, we split, we work ahead, we work late, whatever we need to do Just to be able to take off. that time yeah. as part of our work day, as part of mm -hmm. our work responsibility. And don't you feel like you're in a different world? World. Completely. Oh, and yeah. sometimes <laughs> it is so stressful having to work ahead to be able to, and you almost think like, oh, if I didn't have to do this, I would. But then when you're there, oh, it was all worth it. And yeah. then you come back re-energized. Why? Because when we are working for the faith and working to strengthen our faith, we are going to have obstacles that are going to yeah. come. How are we going to overcome them if we don't have the strength that comes and from these And we can't these remain faith a 24-7 Catholic, as Al said, if we don't reconnect with God. Deacon Dom and I, as a deacon couple, we go on retreat together. He's required to do retreats several times a year. But I like to go with him on occasion. And we're blessed in the Archdiocese of Detroit where they offer a diaconate retreat for couples, and we did that earlier this year in February at a beautiful retreat center in suburban Detroit, literally on on, on the um, right on the outskirts of a huge local park. Where so there's mm. it's very quiet, very pretty grounds, deer walking around, and it was just so great not to be able to have any type of cell phone coverage. You weren't weren't tempted to go to that cell phone. Really makes a big difference. When you think about it, everybody plans a vacation, right? I mean, when you work, where for what do you do? You look for it. when am I taking my vacation? Well, maybe going yeah. along with that should be, when am I taking my retreat, even if it's just a weekend? Likewise. Some people do it a whole week, but a retreat weekend. We should plan that with our vacation. And, of course, you know, at Priest for Life, uh, Father Pavone and I, over the years... Our uh, spiritual advisor. He's who, our spiritual advisor. hello, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but we had given a pro-life uh, retreat for pro-life leaders, mm -hmm. uh, taking them away to a very beautiful place called Chapel Hill in California. Uh, I mean, like you said, no <laughs> cell phone signal there. But it was only for, like, two days. But what, what a, a difference, What right? a difference it made for some of these leaders. And you know how they always talk behind the scenes, how like, oh, how come all the pro-life movement doesn't get together? Why can't they all? Those retreats mm -hmm. really built in a lot of, uh, what would you say, coming together of people over the years. And uh, of course, we still do them. And uh, there, there's something to be said for doing, like I said, even if it's a weekend retreat. So I think, I think at the end, I'm going to remind people for the homework. In addition to planning your family vacation plan, schedule, schedule a retreat. retreat. We schedule have to go retreat. to the break when we come back. More <laughs> ideas on how to become a 24-7 Catholic, what that really means. And also, where did that title come from? I have a very powerful story, and I'm sure you can relate to this. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. We are in episode number two, season number nine of The Catholic View for Women. We're so glad you're watching us. We'll be right back. We are so glad you're tuning in once again to The Catholic View for Women. This is our ninth season, episode number two. We're continuing our discussion on how to become 
a 24-7 Catholic and also to remain a 24-7 Catholic as well as a joyful believer. We'll talk about joy a lot in this segment of our program. If you're just tuning in, we did play a clip from my wonderful colleague at Ave Maria Radio and EWTN, Al Cresta, and he's a noted apologist and speaker and author, but still has to make sure he's keeping up on his faith and staying joyful and being a 24-7 Catholic. We were talking about, along with Elena Rodriguez, my co-host, and of course, Janet Marana, being joyful disciples by going on retreat, by staying connected to the Lord. And it really is something, Elena, that we talked about in the first episode was discovering this treasure, this pearl of mm -hmm. great price, and really being joyful that, wow, we have so much in our Catholic faith. And we have to study our faith as well. Right. To be able to value what we have. Going to Holy Mass is such a rich treasure in and of itself. The more we study, the more we understand. Why do we the more stand it means. up? What, right. Why do we right. sit right. down? Why do we kneel at this time at the other? Why do we have an exchange of... All this during Mass, everything has a meaning, absolutely everything, but we don't value it until we come to know it. Right. So living our faith has three components, studying, praying, and acting Acting on it. out, practicing right. it. Well, when you say everything has a meaning, it reminds me one part of the Part of the Mass in particular is when we make the sign of the cross on our forehead, on Before our lips, and our heart. The gospel. And yeah. really what that's saying is, oh Lord, may your words be in my mind, be on, on my, my lips, lips and, and in, in my, my heart. heart. Right. I mean, how many, I, when I came back to the church and learned that whole thing, now when I do that, I say that silently to myself, mm -hmm. you know, as a little prayer right before the gospel. But how many people don't know that, that beautiful little, that symbolism? Some people think we're just quickly doing this zip, 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 with making the cross, sign of the cross. But it has that beautiful meaning to focus us in about the words we're about to hear are Jesus' mm -hmm. words. And may, may they be in my mind and on my lips, meaning that's part of the 24-7, that you take those words throughout your week then. That or gospel. even the holy water of making the sign yes, of the cross when you walk in church. Yes. I, I, I was speaking at a conference, women's conference in Minnesota last year and there was a wonderful priest, I can't remember his name, but he was he was a hoot. He was talking about how we just sometimes are so rote in the church where we just go right. through the motions and we get into the habit. And he said one year during Lent, he, he put a camera in by the um, holy by the holy water. <laughs> oh, oh. That he removed, funny. of course, because during Lent he removed the holy water, right? And he wanted to see how many Catholics are really paying attention. He said even without the holy water, they were still going in, making the sign of the cross, <laughs> walking to the church. It, it gets to be a habit, okay. and right. those habits are not bad, but we have to make sure that we understand the process and what happens. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go back to the story, my whole reason for writing the book, and I think all of us can relate to, to this. And Janet, you were there for my I was there husband's with ordination. Yes, Deacon Downing's ordination. Yeah, the, this was one. Over, beautiful mother. Right, my mother-in-law mother, mother -law, Mary. Right. A beautiful uh, event that we had, ordination, very emotional. We're all at the reception, and people are going up to my mother-in-law, greeting her and saying congratulations, and Janet was talking to her, and they all identify themselves. I'm with Priest Your Life, or I'm with the Divine Mercy Center, or this is what I do, this is how mm -hmm. I met Dom. And she was very gracious, and then she got home, and she was very quiet, which is not like her. I mean, the two of us are 100% Italian, and we usually oh. suck the air out of the room when we're <laughs> no together. No quiet moment. No. And I, she was really quiet, and I said, Mom, are you okay? She goes, I have a question. I said, what's that? And she said, you and your friends are the only ones that I know who take their faith beyond Sunday. Right. How do you do it? I have mm. no idea what that means, and yet everybody seems so wow. in love with God. You know, in love with their what happy they're doing, and happy yes. and joyful. Yeah. Right. She says, I go to Mass, I pray the Rosary occasionally, I grew up Catholic, I would never miss Mass, but she really felt that something was missing. Well, she felt like missing. she was missing something. Right. That there was and, a and we could so identify with that because right. that's where we were. We so were at long one time, ago. but right. she yeah. actually felt the spirit of everyone there. Right. You know, it's. It Very was like tangible. we were all so happy for Dominic mm -hmm. that he became a deacon. Yeah. And we were like celebrating this whole thing. I mean, and she was happy, prideful, actually, my son. Yeah. But right. she didn't get the fact that we were all in such big kind of like ministries. Right. And that was our job. Like, oh, this one isn't like a lawyer, a doctor, an Indian chief. They're like all different things within yeah. the church. And I think yeah. that's what really blew her away. Right, you right. Know? And, but and that's part of this whole idea of embracing your faith and becoming a 24-7. But and making it legit. Making right. it authentic. But, you know, if you live it, it comes across legit. When you think about it, though, all, all three of us, I mean, we didn't, like, think we were going to end up 
hit where we are now. Never. No, never. No, no, never. Never. <laughs> you know, and so sometimes, you know, anyone who's watching right now, you never know what God might be calling you yeah. in your next step or your next journey. If you told me years ago, oh, I'd be on too. TV, you would have wrote, never wrote some books, it. worked with Priest for Life and Father Pavone mm -hmm. and did all the things, but silent no more. I would have said, have you lost your mind? How am I going to do all these things? Yeah. I mean, I just got back from Rome, spoke at the March for Life Rome and gave my talk in Italian. Go figure. But you <laughs> step out in faith, boy. You, yeah. you just can't imagine what the Lord will do. In your Mother life. Angelica yes. always talked about that. You take one step toward God, and He comes running at you with all kinds of, of great lots missions. of stuff. He yeah. just wants a, a willing heart, and this right. is where becoming this this joyful disciple, as as Pope Francis talks about, in the joy of the gospel. And I think one of you is going to read that quote. But this is how you really do become and stay a twenty four seven Catholic, and also help others, mm -hmm. as you said earlier, Elena, become twenty four seven Catholics as well. Let's read this quote because it's absolutely beautiful. So this is from the joy of the gospel. Effective witness to Jesus has these attractive qualities, joy, hospitality, and generous service to the poor and the marginalized. Yeah, and then unless we manifest to others the joy that is ours from having found the pearl of great price, you keep talking about that treasure, mm -hmm. which the is treasure. really important. Yeah. And from being sure of the gospel's invincible power, we will not attract others to listen to the good news. I love this. A parish of glum faces and grumpy attitudes will attract no one. Mm -hmm. Let our faces show our joy, which is not based on our changing circumstances, but the unchanging presence of the risen Lord among us. Scripture commands us to rejoice because we are capable of choosing joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Mm -hmm. And of course, mm. I'm going to yeah. bring us back yeah. to the scriptures here. And I'd like to read, uh, it's Matthew 13, verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Right. So the idea of, of going beyond Sunday and becoming a 24-7 Catholic, as we wrap up with just a few minutes left before you go into our homework, Janet and Elena, is to every day, as you mentioned earlier in the first episode, Elena, you said this beautifully, to get up and to offer the day yeah. to the Lord. Yes. Right. Here I am, Lord, I have come to do your will. This is the surrender. You put your life in God's hands, and until you do that, nothing is, is really going to change. God yeah. is a gentleman. He's not going to force himself on you. The way you start that journey on becoming a 24-7 Catholic is surrendering your life and your will to God, because that's the only way you're going to understand who you are and the plan He has for you. And do it with a sense of joy and hospitality right. and service. I that's mean, the, all right, okay, okay, you can have my life, whatever. <laughs> you yeah. joyfully say, Lord, I am yours. Right. He does not disappoint. He's God. He's God. John 10, 10, I have come to give you life so that you may have it abundantly. abundantly. Okay. Well, and homework. This, oh, <laughs> homework time? Okay. The teacher in the homework. Well, first of all, <laughs> item number one is to, of course, uh, read. Uh, um, Teresa's beautiful book here, Beyond Sunday, which comes with the beautiful study guide uh, and has, is available at the EWTN Religious Catalog. And the video series, you get that if you get the book, goes along with it, eight episodes. That's Short, right. quick, to the point. Okay. And then, of course, number two is UnleashTheGospel.org is where you can find that beautiful letter by uh, Archbishop, Archbishop Biguron. Biguron. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And of course, number three is just a little suggestion. What and who makes you f lose self-control most often? Write out how you plan to react to it next time and pray for that person daily. That's a nice little spiritual activity for you there. Uh, number four, list what frequently causes you to lose your joy. In prayer, ask the Lord to reveal how you should react. Here, I'll add one more to it. I've got a great one. Yeah. Think of the word joy as an acronym. Jesus, Jesus first, first, others, others second, than you. yourself last. last. And we'll exactly. close on that note. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Catholic View for Women. I'm Teresa Tamio, along with my beautiful co-hosts Elena Rodriguez and Janet Morana. We will see you next time on The View. God bless.